The debate over quarantine measures for travellers to the UK has intensified today, with the Spanish government putting more pressure on Downing Street to rethink its policy on journeys to and from Spain. During the day, the boss of Heathrow Airport called for a comprehensive testing system at airports to avoid for the need for sudden quarantine measures. But ministers say that airport testing only identifies a small minority of those infected in the first instance. Well, as things stand, ministers say there is no viable alternative to the 14-day quarantine period for travellers returning from Spain. And Spanish ministers have appealed again for the UK quarantine rules to be relaxed, especially for the Balearic and Canary Islands, which are vital to Spain's tourism industry and are currently recording relatively low rates of infection. The latest figures from Spain's health ministry show there were just 8.35 coronavirus cases per 100,000 people in the Balearic Islands in the past seven days. The UK, by the way, has been running at around twice that rate. Our Europe correspondent, Gavin Lee, sent this report from the island of Mallorca. This is the street that's legendary for millions of British partygoers in Magaluf. The strip, wall to wall with pubs and bars, all closed now. The club reps have no clubs to represent. At least 10,000 people normally at, at one point in the night. At least 10,000 people a night at this and place. And now it's Don't like me. a ghost town. Jody and Christian from London yesterday. come to work here every summer season. So I actually worked here at Crystal's Bar in Magaluf. Um, I, I also lost my job, obviously. There's about, about, about 20 other people that have lost their jobs too now. People with kids, people that live here permanently, you know, everyone's. And then the British government have brought out the new two-week quarantine, which has completely destroyed it for everyone. Like, it's even quieter this week than it was last week. We've literally looked forward to it so much, and then we've come here, and it's just been taken away. Again, like, after we've waited, it's gone. The Stewart family spent £5,000 hoping for a post-pandemic week in a deluxe villa. They were told the day before they arrived the hotel had closed. The only alternative was a theme park hotel. Were you disappointed that the fact you couldn't go on the holiday we booked yes. and we had to come here? I was very disappointed. Waited two years to come back, hadn't we? Yes. Saved up all that money. Well, it means now I have to go two weeks without any pay. At work, I've been a key worker through the whole pandemic. I'm a central key worker, so I'm going, to, I'm going to lose out. Mallorca acted quickly when the pandemic first broke. It was the first airport in Spain to close. And on the Balearic Islands, including Menorca and Ibiza, they've seen just 2,000 cases in five months. And we're told that many businesses that only opened a week ago have now closed again because of the quarantine rule and the advice not to travel here. In the side streets of the capital, Palma, the tourism minister for the Balearic Islands says money from British holidaymakers has provided the backbone to the economy for decades. No one in the UK seems to understand quite how much economic damage this quarantine measures is causing. In terms of the health risk, someone coming here will be far safer than in the UK. One tourist returning home from Spain today, Transport Secretary Grant Shapps. He said the government had considered allowing quarantine-free travel to the islands. We did have a look at whether certain islands could be included and not others. Um, Chris Whitty, the chief medical officer, was very clear with us um, that he was concerned about the data. Across Spain, Covid cases are still rising, the majority in the northeast of the country. But the wish you were here appeals from politicians on these islands now appears to have been in vain. These shores are likely to stay quiet for some time. Well, it's clear that across Spain there are more restrictions being taken to combat COVID. In fact, in every public area now outside, it is mandatory to wear a mask. Madrid, as of midnight tonight. Uh, and also, we're looking at a situation where the British government, Spain says, are clear they are giving up diplomatic attempts to allow, uh, well, to pressure the government to say, drop the quarantine rule for the islands. And in the meantime, you know, TUI, the biggest uh, tour operator in the UK, has confirmed it's extending its suspension of flights here up until next week. So the message, it's not easy to get here anymore and the British government doesn't want British tourists coming out here. The risk, they say, is too high. Gavin, many thanks again. Gavin Lee with the latest there in Mallorca tonight. Well, the recent uh, spikes in coronavirus across Europe could be driven principally by young people, according to the World Health Organization. 
says that several countries in Europe have seen a higher proportion of new cases among young people. In what Boris Johnson said yesterday was a sign that a second wave could be developing in some parts of Europe. Our science editor David Chukman looks at the latest evidence for suggesting that a new wave could be on the way. The coronavirus has been suppressed effectively in many parts of the world, but it is still circulating and we're now in a phase with a lot of flare-ups. So first of all, what's happening with the virus in the UK? Oldham is the latest in a series of towns to be hit by a spike in infections. New restrictions have been imposed. Local outbreaks like this were always predicted. That really sudden increase is, is particularly worrying. I think particularly because we'd seen several weeks of reduction prior to that. Um, it, it, that is absolutely an area of concern and, and that's why we've uh, decided to introduce some additional measures. In the UK, we're nowhere near the peak of infections that we saw earlier this year. And bear in mind, a lot more testing is being carried out than it was back in those days. But the numbers of infections have held fairly steady recently, and it even shown a very slight rise in the last day or so. So what's happening across Europe and how does the UK compare? Well, on this map, the colour red shows where infections were highest in the past fortnight. A few regions in Spain, also Bulgaria, but generally small areas, not whole countries. There are concerns about this farm in Germany. Nearly 150 workers testing positive. But the authorities have moved rapidly to isolate them. Romania is experiencing a spike in cases. Many blame the release of COVID-19 patients from their hospitals. How each outbreak is handled really matters. So as we've seen in the UK, there could be a very slight rise in the last few days. In Germany, there's also been a small increase, and there it's blamed on young people not taking the disease seriously. In Romania, there are very clear signs of an increase, but in Italy, which was very badly hit, there has not been a rise so far. In any event, the numbers involved are far lower than they were earlier this year. We aren't seeing a new wave. We're seeing resurgence of outbreaks in many countries, and that resurgence could spread if countries aren't able to control it. But we do have the epidemiological means to do so, and countries throughout Europe have shown that they can do that, have done that in the past, and hopefully will continue to do that without having to do another general lockdown. But what about the rest of the world? Well, it's more worrying. In the United States, there's been a dramatic rise in infections over the last month, a very different picture to Europe. In India, there's also been a massive increase, and these numbers are bound to be an underestimate of what's really going on. Even in Hong Kong, widely praised for its handling of the virus, there's been an increase with a warning that the hospitals there could collapse. All this means new restrictions. Da Nang in Vietnam is back under lockdown, a blow to a country that claims to have had no deaths from COVID-19. And the US has just passed a grim milestone, 150,000 deaths. Whether it's the first wave or a new wave, the virus is still a threat. David Shukman, BBC News.